You got a car just like daddy. If you are not following this build, that's your problem. But I've made over 25 videos based around yeah, rebuilding this car. So you should probably check them out. And remember, also, if you subscribe and we get this channel to 10K subs before the build is on the road, I'll give the car away to a subscriber because we only have a certain amount of time kind of left to do this. It might not have interior, but the plan is to drive this thing to the show, which is in Niagara Falls. That's like three hours away in two months and two days. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am uh, back in the garage with uh, dad today and uh, it's Saturday morning, 8 a.m. and uh, just waiting on him to get here because over the week, it's been a very busy week, but uh, I've slowly realized because of people commenting and, you know, making jabs, you know who you are. I've realized that I only have two months and two days until a show that I want to get this car to. And this car currently is in a lot of pieces. So over the next week, I really got to get my uh, stuff together and get working on this thing because uh, if I need any, any parts, the order time and the shipping time. Um, basically, I've got to figure everything out over the next week. That's my plan. So today and tomorrow, we got to put that heater channel in the driver's side. We got to put a patch in the driver's side uh, underneath the back seat. Then the driver's side engine bay. So dad's on his way right now with a new sheet of metal. I went out and picked, picked up welding gas yesterday after work and uh, we're pretty much ready to go. Got a lot to do in a very short amount of time, so it's gonna get very stressful very quick, but basically I'm gonna have to pull some favors because this is gonna be um, a lot of work in a short amount of time to get this thing back together. Two months and two days to get this car, which is a pan, a shell, and a sea can outside full of parts back together. And uh, I mean, it might not be painted, it might not have interior, but the plan is to drive this thing to the show which is in Niagara Falls, that's like three hours away in two months and two days. I gotta get to work. I'm gonna put the coffee on and dad's on his way here, so I'll get cleaning up, get this little four-wheeler out of my way, and I gotta get the gas hooked up to the welder, get the welder all set up. I think we need more wire. But doing all this quickly and nicely is uh, a challenge, so I think what I'm gonna do is like the next week or so, I'm just gonna focus on this. I have been kind of slacking on the channel and I'm sorry guys, I've been mainly focused on uh, a lot of other people's content that I create for them. But I'm back to this and uh, I'm back to editing because I've got a pile of footage from working on this with dad, with myself, I just haven't really had time to edit it. So with dad finally here, we can set up the welder with the new bottle of gas and get moving on to getting that driver's side heater channel in place. Oh, you broke my floor. <laughs> I put that on there for a reason. That's, that's to tighten that. You shaking, me shaking. It's you shaking, not me. It's hard to know if it's full though, eh? It weighed the same amount as the other one. I agree. So I was like, I don't know if I'm should get in full tank or not. It shows it's got. They ripped me off. 1700, 1800. That looks like halfway to me. I want to build my piece. Your piece? Cut me. Oh, for your car? All right, so first things first, I guess dad is working on his beetle at home and uh, he's sick of sick of not being able to access the spark plugs and everything on the back side of the motor because it's so tight. So he's gonna cut, uh, well he has, you cut them already, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. He's cut the uh, inner wheel well out, just little holes in the inner wheel well, and he's making like little doors so that he can access the back side of the motor just to check the plugs or whatever he's gotta do back there. So that's what uh, we're doing first. This is yep. a creative solution to a common problem. Majority of Beetle owners complain about not being able to access the backside of the motor. Beetles have issues, they aren't perfect. And when you need to check your plugs, you can't really access them. This will allow Dad easy access moving forward. So it slides over the existing inner fender well, that's just a mock-up piece. And it would fill the hole and then this is the inside looking out. And then this would 
attach it to the car as it swings shut or as it gets put in and that side's locked that side would get bolted or something and then you'd have access to your spark plugs Perfect. it might, might work might. so we've made one and if it works then we'll make another one so since we're all done making that uh, little test patch for dad's car we're actually gonna get started on this one so our plan today is to get that heater channel kind of mocked up we have to clean the a and b pillar all up so that we can put the heater channel up against it nice if we can get it to sit there correctly then we're hopefully going to tack it in place today hopefully yeah and then the smaller patches i can kind of get done whenever but the big stuff it's great to have dad here for for sure because aligning that heater channel to the pan is pretty important because when you go to put it back together if it doesn't line up well you're kind of you're shit out of luck. Let's try that. What are you cutting? Why? This is all old patch. Oh yeah, okay. This is part kind of of the old car. So I'm gonna cut it here, I guess. Here. Okay, so I guess I just gotta grind this until it falls off. Kinda, yep. Yeah. Okay. So to get the heater channels to fit correctly, there's little pieces of the old heater channel still connected on the A and the B pillar. The B pillar, you can see this little chunk right here, still connected. So we got to cut the welds, pry it off on both sides so that the new heater channel will fit up there correctly when we go to put it on because it's got to sit nice when you put it up there so a lot of cleaning up we each took a pillar and went to work trying to remove the remaining pieces of the old heater channel we were trying to be as gentle as possible. Number one, not to move the panels too much, and number two, not to remove too much. If we do, we won't be able to fit the door in the gap between the heater channel and the roof. Exposed now to what I think, like it's not the proper shape of the heater channel by any means, but any, what? any means. Well, this is not easy, so. But. Mine looks, mine looks better than yours. <laughs> so I just, we gotta clean up the bottom of it so that we have something nice to weld to, obviously, and make sure it's all good metal. And then it's gotta fit the heater channel roughly so that we can actually weld to it. No, don't do that. You want a zip tie? Oh no, that's too easy. Dad's really hating all the sound deadener that I didn't clean up. This is my fault, which it is. I tried, I just didn't do enough of it. You didn't try. I did try. Um, but we also have to do that corner same time as the heater channel, I guess, because that heater channel butts up to that corner. So we have to cut that out same time as we try and get this, this uh, heater channel in place. You wanna cut it right in front of the hole? Cut it right there, cut along here, and right there. I don't know what to do with this. Like, what do you, that's part yeah, of the like part. the other side we had to walk up um, two inches, two and a half inches above that patch that we installed. So that would put us up basically at that black line, right? Roughly. And that kind of looks tough on this side too, so. How would you know? There's so much undercoat. It's definitely not uh, fun stuff. Scratch the cleaning it all up. We're going to cut it. So dad's getting geared up to cut it. Because <laughs> it's not good to cut through this stuff. It'll just start burning. So. Yeah, you need the cutting. And I did. Use this one up. And then I'll get you a new one. And my lid. Yeah, where's your lid over here? 
this is going to just be just wonderful. Could always be worse. Okay, Dad, I got this. Well, I, I, yeah. I cleaned up half of it. I just didn't do the full extent, but, you know, we can complain or we can move forward. <laughs> yeah. Now, because I didn't remove the sound deadener in this area, and Dad just decided to cut it without cleaning it, the garage was covered in smoke real fast and didn't smell good at all. Thankfully, Dad wore the mask because the mask itself was covered in sound deadener. It was at this moment we burned the camera lens again for the 20th time. We've been pretty rough on this camera. This this lens is getting pretty pretty tough. We have a welder, we can fix it. Yeah, we have a welder. So dad's cut the, the driver's side all out. And uh, after a lot of struggle with the sound deadener and whatnot, he does have it cleared. There is a little bit bigger of a hole than the passenger side, but we're getting the patch fitted up right now just to make sure it'll fit. Which of course, you know, it doesn't fit very nice, so we've got to make it work. And this still has to all be trimmed out. Getting there though. Easy for me to say on the outside, but uh, that was pretty easy to cut, eh? Oh yeah. Not bad? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> Just five minutes. <laughs> no. Two hours, yeah. we got it fixed. Two hours, done. <laughs> <laughs> It's a tricky piece, eh? It's like this, the face of this, uh, how's that sit now, like this. Yeah, this is definitely part of that, that channel. That's what I'm thinking too. So this has to slide in like so, but we're thinking this piece at the back here is part of the old piece of this because this is two pieces put together and then it slides around the fender nut to attach the fender. So that makes sense to me. That makes sense if we take that whole end cap off, this becomes the new end cap. Would be my guess. But there's no way to just get at it. No. When is no luck? I see it, I just can't. All right, we almost got that back chunk um, out, but the inner lip is still giving us a hard time. So we just have to peel it away from the spot while it's going up and over. You can see that little lip there. We're peeling the lip away from. Just take a moment to notice the harness right there. Very close to where we are cutting. That harness carries all the connections to the engine and the rear of the car. The other lip, so that we can... Um, so basically when... Oh, that's the wrong piece. So when our patch goes in, it's gonna sit right up against that lip, all nice. So we should be able to sneak it right in behind that lip, snug it up, weld it to it, and then the heater channel's gonna meet up to it. But in a perfect world, as of right now, it's not going that great. There's a lot of rust. Nothing we can't take out and repair, like nothing too major, but there's a lot of rust and that sound deadener is a total pain in the butt for dad. My bad. I started to cut with the Sawzall and I went a little bit Sawzall crazy and I actually just cut the harness. This harness. Yeah, I cut it. So it's a good thing I have another harness, but I wasn't really planning on using it. So that's my bad. I told dad I was gonna blame it on him, but it's my bad. I'm the one who broke out the Sawzall with the six inch blade. I put it in just a little bit too deep and I got four or five wires out of the whole harness, but my bad, I'll fix it. I have a new harness, so that's just gonna be a, uh, another thing that I have to do. 
which isn't a big deal because I kind of I, I wanted to do it anyways that's why I bought the $400 harness I wanted to replace it deep down you know if it's not a problem already why fix it I, I just noticed a bunch of the wires didn't look that great so I bought a new harness so yeah I was kind of fighting with myself on if I was gonna do it or not but I'm, I'm doing it now so um, yeah that'll be a project for soon harness from the dash all the way back to the engine bay so yeah my bad there's the actual harness is right right there and I got when I was cutting um, just this little piece out I touched it so oh well oh well you know now I'm forced to do the new wiring harness which I mean is ultimately a good thing for the car nothing I can't fix I guess just more work told you full harness from the dash back didn't want to do it but it came with instructions so I guess I'm doing it but we are almost ready to put that heater channel in um, this guy right here at least mock it up see how it fits and see where we're gonna have to make some modifications so it fits nice and then um, once that's done we have to mount it up to the pan which I'm sure is gonna be an issue again because we we had to cut an inch out of the other one so we'll probably have to cut an inch out of this one um, but we have to mount it up to the pan then lift the body up slide the pan underneath drop the body down again we're like nine times now body pan body pan drop it down match it up then tack the heater channel in once it's sitting good with the body painful but at least it's correct because um, you know if, if you weld the heater channels directly into the body I'm gonna say at this point there's like an 85% chance that it's not gonna line up by the time you put it in the car by the time you try to marry the floor and the body together the heater channels won't line up the bolt holes and you're gonna have a nightmare so if you do it this way at least it is a lot of test fitting a lot of moving the pan underneath a lot of messing around but at least the bolt holes will line up and you're sure of it when you do it right so um, yeah total pain not very impressed with myself right now that I just cut the harness but oh well oh well oh well we have another harness I ain't even really touched that much yet and I break out the sawzall and of course I cut the harness I've done a bunch of grinding and everything but dad's done the majority of the cutting and then I jump in there and pfft, harness gone my bad yeah I've been just trying to get in and weld all these little spots on the passenger side but I haven't really had time because I've been helping with everything he's doing so I don't know do you guys get this too whenever I work on metal or I grind it feels like it's in my teeth so I have to like eat chips all day or crackers Today I'm on crackers, crackers. So we are moving along and uh, it's it's going. It's not going the greatest, but it's going. So hopefully we can get that heater channel tacked in. What time is it now? 2.07, we've been at it what? Two hours? Two hours. <laughs> <laughs> so 2.07 um, and we're almost ready to start test fitting the heater channel to see kind of where we have to cut and and grind to actually get that heater channel to fit nice and then um a lot of fun from there still but i need chips all right so we almost got that patch out and uh in i guess but it's very awkward to sit in there and we have to hold it in with vice grips and everything but uh we're almost ready to test fit the driver's side heater channel finally test fit and see where we've got to make a, a little bit of an adjustment around the A and B columns and then um, bolt it to the pan and keep moving forward. It was finally time to mock up the heater channel and see what how close the A and B pillars were for working for us. That's her. Really? No. I guess. Oh, your, uh, your pan on the front here is hitting. See this whole lip? Yeah. Pretty much has to come off. Does it? Yep. And then this piece right on the back that they, this piece right here that someone's just making, Mangled yep, making mess together. That one. It's all gonna come off. 
Yeah, so the big deal right now that's blocking me is this. All right. All right, so that heater channel does not line up the best. Um, oops. Um, could definitely be better. We're getting closer, and I, I we were just talking, and I think the driver's side is worse than the passenger side. It's a little bit tougher, and uh, yeah, a little tougher. But um, yeah, yeah, is what it is. So in order to actually see where the heater channel has to go, because right now we're kind of all over the place putting it in, we're not sure if it's in the right spot, we have to clean up and bolt the heater channel to the pan and then put the pan underneath to see where it's gonna actually line up because uh, if not, we're just guessing. So we have the heater channel bolted up to the floor pan. Uh, right now we've got five or six bolts in it and it's roughly lining up where we need it to up here. So now we have to lift the body back up for like the ninth time and slide the pan back underneath to see where the heater channel is going to line up in the body when we put the body down on top. We have cleaned up, um, or dad did a lot of it, but we've cleaned up the, uh, where the heater channel has to sit. But when you cut out the, um, the previous one that was there, you're always left with like a question mark of a shape. So we needed to be as close as we can. So that's why test fitting the body on top of the pan with the heater channel beforehand is important. It's, uh, it's without it, it's kind of a guessing game. So that's what we have to do next. Um, body up, stands out, pan back underneath and see where it all lines up. It's always fun doing this. You, you can never get the pan to line up right. Okay, it's mounted up at the rear. Yeah, it's, it's definitely tougher than the front. It's definitely way worse than the passenger side, so we're just gonna have to kind of make it work. Um, but we have to, to cut away the A pillar to allow the car to drop down correctly. It's a bit of a headache, but we'll get it. Mom just went and got pizza. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Um, yeah, so we'll take a break, I guess, and uh, have some dinner, but not going that great, eh, Dad? Uh, no. <laughs> Passenger side looks easy now. All right. So it's not going that good. The body really doesn't want to fit proper going back down. Oh, I don't know what's going on, but that uh, heater channel is too far out on the driver's side. They're not lining up at all, and they're not lighting up nicely. Um, we are gonna have to do some cutting away at that A pillar to get it to drop down correctly. But basically, the the front of the pan here isn't wanting to meet up to that body nicely. There's like a half inch gap, and I keep thinking there's something in between it, but I can't find anything. So, um, yeah, it's been a long day, and we thought the driver's side would be better than the passenger side. But it is what it is. Dad's definitely starting to get worried because, um, you know, it's been way more work than we thought and it's been way more of a headache than we thought and we have such a deadline ahead of us. Um, 
with two months to go and this car is a mess right now. It doesn't look too good. The deadline doesn't look too good. I got like cheese stuck to my tooth. Um, so yeah, driver's side is definitely a lot worse than the passenger side. And um, I looked at the car this morning, noticed that one of the back tires is flat, so everything's kind of sitting crooked, so I have to fix that so we can get it all square. Because right now it's it's just sitting funny. We're not sure what's going on, but it's not allowing the pan to to meet the body nicely. I'm gonna go eat. Then we'll then we'll get back to it. Because Dad's stressed today, he's a little cranky. So um, he wants the radio on, which is YouTube. And then we got copyright strikes through YouTube if we play the radio. So I try to keep the radio off when I'm talking to you guys. Which makes it hard to like enjoy the time in the shop. But yeah, we like to work with the radio on, but with doing this, with filming, it makes it hard to have the radio on. But, here's what it is. Um, I enjoy doing this, so I try to prioritize the camera. Every time we work on the car, the camera gets the first, uh, first pick of view and listening. Whenever the camera's on, I try to shut the radio off. And uh, that way we have no issues when it comes to posting on YouTube. But, anyways. Yeah. Good talk. See you out there. So then we're saying that I need another disc, by the way. Yeah, I'll get you one. But we're saying that we still have meat left on the A pillar and the B pillar, and it's causing the car to sit crooked. Our door gap from the heater channel to the top is uh what do we say about an inch bigger on the driver's side right now it was no. um no half oh yeah okay half an inch yeah. we're not gonna go it's crazy with anyways but it's uh that door gap is a lot larger than this one and this one fits the door because we already tested that so not that it fits great but it fits sawzall maybe so we have to match this door gap on that side and in order to get the correct gap we've got the jack underneath the heater channel pushing it up and uh, we just measured it and like I said it's uh, about a half inch out so we still have to separate it take some meat off the bottom put it back up keep test fitting it till it's right 41 and a quarter Better, but still not good. Sorry. <laughs> it's terrible. Does that work? All right, so I think we have the heater channel kind of roughly in place um, after a lot of wiggling and cutting the A and the B pillar to fix that door gap on both sides. We finally have it matched, uh, roughly matched. Um, but what we're gonna do is, I think tack in the A pillar first because the jack is underneath that spot. And then we'll move the jack down to the B pillar, lift it up, tack that in. And um, at that point, I guess both heater channels will be tacked in the car. Then we just gotta tack that patch into the back. Yeah, no stopping me after that, right? Good to go. <laughs> just, I'm gonna have like a full day of welding, grinding, after this is all in place. That's what I was just saying. After it's all in place, I've got like a full day of welding, grinding, fixing all the pinholes, straightening up a lot of the stuff, making it look good. What are you looking at? What? Nothing. <laughs> Something. You look here, right? Yeah. touch. This is fine, right? See how this comes down? This comes down. We messed up. What? No. That's the way the panel was. We didn't alter that panel. Right? No. You're missing what I'm saying. I looked at this when we first started. Because normally, that lip wouldn't... You just told me on the opposite side that that lip for the inner fender well has about an inch of a gap. Why did I tell you that? Between the heater channel and the lip. Why did I tell you that? I don't know. Because that's... that. 
that lip normally touches this. We got about an inch on the other side. Is that a different panel? No. <laughs> Isn't it? I don't know. No, I think you just had it lined up differently. We didn't bolt it in. I'm hoping that's the case. I think you just had it lined up differently. <clears throat> yeah, you totally, you just pulled it up close to it. You confused me when you said no. that too. Yeah. No. What do you mean? Yes. That, that still the, matches up with the heater channel. It matches up, but this is where the panel should be. Which is... Well, that patch is obviously... Right it's bent. What do you mean? I'm still confused. Okay. That's okay. where the panel should be. Okay. Put the camera down. Well... And look at it. What? No way! No way! <laughs> this is a TikTok guy. Um, kind of confused. Right, so on the other side we had this patch panel lip meet the heater channel nice, and we actually drilled it and plug welded it. Right? But we were able to bolt it up and do all that. Where does the... So with this bolt in, it drops it to... Oh my gosh, like right there. Okay. So we're like a half inch past the lip. Where does that knoll, that, that bend in the bottom, this bend, where does it line up compared to the car? Like, if you take the bolt out, ignore the bolt. Yep. That's a good panel. This line, this line, this section, you know what I mean? Yep. The way, I think somebody at CIP1, again, <laughs> I'm wondering. that's the wrong, it's in the wrong spot. It should be down here. The other patch panel we got worked perfect. It bolted up, everything lined up nice. But with this bolted up, that lip sits way too low to make sense because the door gap is the same now. We've got the door gap the same on both sides. So it doesn't matter where it bolts up because we're cutting that bolt out anyways. No, I know, but I'm just it's, like, how it's do, just weird. How does it make sense? It doesn't. Because technically if that's bolted up, is that saying we have this pushed up too high? But the math says no because the door gap's the same on both sides. So if you measure from the bolt hole down yep. where's to the, the heater channel. Where's the measure stick? Because we've cut out one here because it's a little it. soft. Come on. Oh, shoot. It's over here. Okay, center of the bolt hole down is three and five eighths roughly. Okay. Here. To the outside edge, the bottom edge, you know what I mean? Three and five eighths to the outside edge from the center of the hole. That's weird. To the outside edge? Out the bottom edge, not the top edge of the of that lip. So you're going center of bolt? To the bottom edge of the heater channel. Yeah, heater channel. Ooh. Three and seven eighths. So we better double check all of our measurements here. So three and three quarters to the center of the bolt to the top side of the hat. To the top side, what was it? Three and three quarters. So we have it roughly in place and we're gonna tack it now, finally. Um, yeah, we'll see. We just dragged the welder out and um, yeah, time to weld it. <laughs> want to jump in and then I'll switch stuff and you'd be like turn this and I'll do it sure because I don't know what to tell you to turn so <laughs> I 
mean, this mark's sitting a little bit above the mark on the body. Yep. A little bit. Bang on. So we have the heater channel tacked in place now, and uh, I'm pretty sure, well, we're pretty sure we can lift the body back off the pan, pull the pan back out, and um, start kind of getting that patch situated in the rear and weld that heater channel on solid. Nothing should move now because we've tacked it in a bunch of spots, so um, we just took the bolts out of the heater channel and time to lift the body back up and get the pan back out from underneath it. Uh, this is like our second or third last time having to do this. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> With the heater channel in place and the inner fender finally lining up, it was time to clean up for the day. Dad's been a trooper with all of this, every weekend, sometimes multiple days each weekend. But he and I both need some rest. <laughs> 